Okay, thanks for uh, tuning again. Today we are looking at um, a second video of the series about the Prom emulator. Uh, we're going to have a quick look at um, a small single board computer design that uh, I'm playing with. Um, this time it's going to be just on a breadboard. Um, but of course we'll try to use the emulator to um, actually make it useful. So let me just quickly show you a bit of the design. Um, so it's it's absolutely simple. Five um, integrated circuits uh, apart from the main CPU, which is in this case the, the Z80. We have uh, 32K of um, memory, a space for uh, 27256 EEPROM, so 32K EEPROM. And uh, to provide some kind of I.O. Uh, for the Z80, as you know, it's a CPU, not a microcontroller, so it needs a um, I/O. Uh, we are adding uh, an 8255 um, I/O chip. Um, for address decoding, very simple, uh, with some gates, um, and of course we need to include um, an oscillator, so local clock source for the for the CPU. Um, a simple reset circuit as well. So all of this is kind of very, very basic, but it's enough components to get uh, Z80 up and running. So we'll try to um, kind of code something in assembly uh, and show you how, how, it, uh, how it's then used with the emulator. So let's have a look at um, the, actual, the actual device. Um, so you see, this is um, this is my my breadboard. We have a couple of chips here. We have the the Z80 processor kind of hiding somewhere inside the in between all this mess of mess of wires. Um, there's also um, memory. I mean, my schematic was showing a 32k uh, memory, but I've just used uh, a very small um, 6116 memory for this test. And um, there's a socket for um, for the EEPROM, and of course I'm, I'm inserting my EEPROM emulator in that socket. Um, obviously, the emulator probe kind of is expecting to sit on a flat surface of the of the normal circuit. So in a breadboard situation, um, I'm giving myself a little bit more space between the breadboard and the emulator probe by just adding an extra couple of um, 28 pin sockets. Um, as you can see the circuit is, is running right now. Uh, there's a simple blinky program um, loaded right now. As you can see it kind of blinks um, every couple you know once once a second. So that's um, that's up and running. So let's have a look how um, how we can program the whole thing, you know, how we can change the program on this uh, breadboard um, for the for the for the stuff running on the breadboard right now. Um, so today um, I'm going to be doing it under Linux. I mean, this is actually driven as a SSH session to my Raspberry Pi, and the emulator itself is plugged into the Raspberry Pi. Uh, I have a small script, uh, four lines um, script, um, starts the editor. Um, let me just flip so you can see a little bit of a little bit better. So starts um, starts the emulator. I use Vim in this case. Um, once I finish editing the assembly file, uh, I compile it. Um, once the compiling is done, I give myself a chance to read uh, any outputs uh, of the compiler. And if I'm happy, um, I I just close the um, I just close, uh, I just press any, any key to continue. And then the script calls um, the actual Python script that uploads the, the new code into the, into the emulator. So in this case, two simple parameters, the type of memory and, and you know, I'm disabling all the saving to SPI because in this, um, uh, in this situation where you constantly modifying, updating the firmware or, or you're writing new firmware. There's no point to save anything to the SPI. You're just um, you know, going through multiple revisions. Um, so that's why I'm dis disabling saving to SPI or automatically loading the same code. 
um, by selecting the uh, uh, no for those two parameters uh, I specify the uh, hex file that I want to upload and the USB port on which the emulator is plugged in okay so with all of those uh, let me just show you uh, so obviously I've been playing around trying to do things um, just before I started recording but let's run the script so the first thing the script does is allows us to modify the program the program is very simple um, all it does is um, configures the uh, 8255 uh, for its mode of operation and then it sends um, either 00 or FF to port, uh, port B on the 8255 um, the LED is on, on one of the pins of port B, so uh, it will go on and off um, as, we, uh, as we change the, the, the value of the port. Uh, there's a delay in between, um, in between sending the 00 or FF into the port. So right now, the value of the delay is um, 0A hexadecimal. Let's change it to 01, so it should start, if we up upload this program, it should start um, flushing uh, more often. Uh, let me make sure that you see. Um, so, you know, imagine I made this change. Um, I now want to uh, verify if it works, so um, I'm going to save. Um, I'm going to save my changes. Uh, the script calls the assembler, um, assembler finished assembling or compiling the program uh, and generated the new hex file. Um, I can just review, okay, I'm happy with the changes. Um, I, I just go uh, and move forward. Um, the uh, emulator has now uploaded or updated the firmware. And as you can see, the LED is now flashing very fast. So that's how, um, you know, this is how you would use the emulator in this um, firmware development mode. So we now have um, the LED flashing faster. And that's really wh what you can do with the emulator. This is how easy it is to, to use it. Um, so you can change um, change the, the code live on your system. It obviously works with a breadboard, but it works with a full system as well. Okay, hope that was useful. Um, I had to, you know people asking uh, for a little bit more instructions with a specific target so this is one of the first targets I, I want to show in a video. Right, I hope you like it. Thank you for watching. Bye.